Welcome to I Can Science That, where we do honest investigations of everyday science. I've been doing a series of these response videos based on this debate between Austin Whitsitt and Professor Dave Farina. In the previous two videos, we've been talking about the CMB, Cosmic Microwave Background, and the Axis of Evil, which Austin Whitsitt brings up as some sort of evidence for his idea that the Earth is stationary. Let's hear him say that in the video now. Gee, it's Go about ahead. is the Earth moving or not? So okay. in the current model that the Earth is flying around the sun, the universe, whatever, it's every all the energy should be evenly distributed. That's called homogenous, and it should be isotropic, meaning it has no preferred direction. Okay, okay. but what they saw was that it was inhomogeneous and anisotropic, and actually the part that had a preferred direction intersected on the Earth. And they ended up calling it the axis of evil. And then what they saw was that this, this anisotropic inhomogeneous distribution of energy was actually on a 23.4 degree tilt, which was supposedly the Earth's tilt, but it was see, observed way beyond our quote unquote galaxy, which means it could not have been the Earth tilted. So it's a major problem. The CMB matched the geocentric model. Okay, so there was, there was a lot there, a lot of fancy words, um, and he didn't really get to explain any of it. Let's try to break it down just a little bit. Um, the, the early on, you hear him make the main point. Let's hear this again. Gee, it's Go about ahead. is the earth moving or not? Okay, is the earth moving or not? In previous videos in this series, people have pointed out that this is not Austin proving that the earth is flat. This is merely Austin showing the heliocentric model is wrong. And I get that. Don't forget the context, of course, that Austin Witsit is insisting that the Earth is flat. So any evidence that he presents, which is inconsistent with the flatness of the Earth, should be brought up. That's, that's contradictory to his own point. But I digress. He is clearly stating that this is actually about whether the Earth is moving or not. That's the point, and that's what we're going to talk about in this video. Is the Earth moving or not, according to Austin Witsit's evidence? Towards the end of this clip, we'll hear Witsit say that point again, that he is emphasizing he is presenting this evidence as if it is supporting geocentrism and somehow refuting heliocentrism. Let's hear him say it. So it's a major problem. The CMB matched the geocentric model. Okay, the CMB matched the geocentric model. But does it? What is Austin even talking about? He's talking about the CMB. There's a picture of the CMB on the screen. And let's look more into these anisotropies that Austin is referring to. Here's tutorial point, and I will throw a link down in the doobly-doo for this article. So here's this, here's this CMB and the what is called the dipole. Uh, what is this dipole that we're talking about, and why is it important? In terms of a response video for that debate, I would ask the question, uh, Austin, what's it? What is the dipole? I understand that when we get to the, the axis of evil itself, we'll be talking about the quadrupole and the octopole. What are those? But <laughs> before we get there, let's start with the dipole. What is the dipole? <laughs> Let me draw your attention to this part right here. The dipole direction we get to see is not any random direction. Right? This That goes to... Austin's point, this is not a random direction. For some reason, I struggle with this word. Dipole anisotropy has a direction. Cool. We see the CMB intensity along a specific direction. Wow, why is that? That's incredible. If the universe is supposed to be isotropic, why is there this specific direction? This is a really good question. Here's the answer. This direction is due to the solar system velocity vector. 
The velocity of Earth can be represented with respect to sun or center of galaxy. The direction in which the Earth is moving, we observed a blue shift and red shift, and the dipole lies along this direction. What we just said is the dipole is literally the measurement of the solar system's movement through the universe. Tell me again, how does this tell us that the Earth is stationary? This is a picture showing the speed of the solar system as it flies through the universe. We are headed in that direction. That's where we're going as a solar system. This CMB measurement with its most basic analysis of the non-uniform pattern shows very clearly the motion of the solar system through the universe. That is literally what we're talking about. So when Austin brings this up and claims that this is somehow support for geocentrism, it isn't at all. This is absolutely the opposite of that. This is showing that the solar system is moving through the universe, not that it is stationary. And the fact that, that Austin would bring this up as if it is showing the Earth to be stationary, uh, I find really incredible. Let me also include a clip from Dr. Becky. I'll link it up there and, of course, down in the doobly-doo. Uh, let's hear Dr. Becky explain in simple terms what is this dipole and what is the axis of evil. Taking the average temperature of parts of the sky separated by 180 degrees, that's the dipole. Now we know that one of the most dominant features in the cosmic microwave background is that dipole feature and it's due to our motion through the universe with respect to that first light. So that's a combination of the Earth's motion around the Sun, the Sun's motion around the center of the Milky Way, and then the Milky Way's motion through the universe. And that's just due to a traditional Doppler shift to the microwave light waves of light because of our movement. You just heard Dr. Becky explain it uh, as better than I could. Could, I think this is the motion of our solar system through the universe. That's literally what we're looking at right here. The, this is the Doppler shift caused by our motion through the universe. There is in, in no way is this support for a geocentric stationary Earth. This is quite the opposite, clearly demonstrating the movement of the Earth. So that's my main point, and I'm going to keep on stressing it, which is that Austin Witsit is trying to tell you that this CMB data somehow shows a geocentric model when it is literally an analysis of the motion of the solar system through the universe. Austin Witsit has presented this CMB data and he's telling you that the CMB data shows a geocentric model. It does not. This CMB data literally shows the movement of our solar system through the universe. Let's just Google CMB speed of solar system and you'll just see it right here in the summary. The CMB that Austin Witsit wants you to believe shows the Earth is at rest does not show the Earth is at rest. It shows the Sun's speed relative to the cosmic rest frame as 369.82 kilometers per second with an error margin of plus or minus 0.11 kilometers per second. So yeah, it's moving at, at 370 kilometers per second through space. That ain't stationary. Okay, so I know uh, if you are Austin Witsit or you are a supporter of Austin Witsit, you don't want to hear any of that. You don't want to hear about how you just presented the CMB, which literally allows us to measure the speed of the Earth moving through the universe. You don't want to hear that. You want to talk about the axis of evil because the axis of evil disproves heliocentrism. Okay, let's talk about the axis of evil. Here, here's an image that shows it very clearly. I found it in this article. Check the doobly-doo. You can find this. 
these little bubbles, these red and these orange and blue bubbles, uh, they represent like fluctuations in the cosmic microwave background. And those are not bubbles caused by our motion. Our motion is in the direction of this thing here, the pointed dipole. Dipole and dipole, top and bottom, those are the direction the, the solar system is moving through the galaxy labeled on the diagram. The, uh, the ecliptic plane is this line that that is the plane the Earth goes around the sun, and that is labeled here on the diagram. Once again, I'll stress, as per the previous video, this is a sphere. The sky is a sphere. So we have a spherical representation of the sky. We have a representation of the Earth orbiting the sun as this black line. The direction the solar system moving through the universe is labeled as dipole. And this EQX dot, there's two of them, these are the dots on the ecliptic plane that represent where, uh, where the, the Earth's equinoxes occur as they go around the sun. This is all astronomy stuff. And if you don't believe the Earth is a globe or that space exists or that the Earth moves around the sun, none of this has any meaning to you at all. But Austin wants to talk about it. So here we go. What is this quadrupole, octopole, and why is this important? You can see on here that the, the quadrupole is the, is the more interesting one, really, and that is this little square right there, and it is, happens to be very, very close to the plane of the ecliptic. It's not dead on the plane of the ecliptic, but within error margin, it is. So that's close enough to the plane of the ecliptic that you say, hey, what a coincidence, that's kind of weird. And also people have pointed out that it's kind of close to the equinox point. So, so what does this all mean? Um, we can see that the, uh, the, both the quadrupole and the octopole happen to lie very close to the plane of the ecliptic. And maybe that means something about the universe, that the universe has an alignment that is parallel with our plane of motion around the sun. Does that indicate in any way that the Earth is not moving around the sun? No, I, I, quite the opposite. That is showing that the Earth is moving around the sun, and the curious thing is that the universe, the CMB, is aligned with that. That's, that's unexpected. In a live stream just the other day, I heard Dr. Parks talking about this, and it seems that there's a new analysis, and maybe this is sort of a, a big old nothing burger. I don't know. We'll see. It's interesting. I think it's very interesting, and I intend to follow this, and I think you all should as well. What are the developments going to come out of this? What do we have to learn? And maybe even what spiritual meaning can you extract from this on your own? If you're a spiritual person, I might suggest that you look at this and you say, could this be a clue that the Creator has left for us in the sky? Maybe you could interpret that as a sign, a clue left from the Creator. But that clue is not telling you that the Earth doesn't move. That clue is telling you that the Creator set up this motion deliberately, that this is what the Creator wants you to see. That seems like a perfectly reasonable spiritual approach for all of this. Uh, for myself, uh, I would say that's, that's outside the realm of what science can truly determine, so I can't science that. I can't science the Creator and whether this was deliberate. What I can tell you is that this CMB data shows us the motion of the solar system through the universe 
and that the patterns we see in the distant universe have an interesting alignment that's uh, sort of similar to that. And that opens up new questions, new areas of research that uh, hopefully people will dig into more questions to be answered. With that, I'd like to wrap up this series uh, of these responses. If anybody wants to contribute, please feel free. Keep those comments polite and civil. If you are someone who doesn't buy into the mainstream science narrative, that's okay. You don't have to agree with me and think of things in the same way that I do in order to have your opinion be respected here. My personal analysis of all of this shows that Austin Witsit is spectacularly biased in what he chooses to present. I have no way of knowing what's really going on in someone else's head, but to me, uh, the things that he presents are clearly contradictory to his own stated beliefs. One thing I have learned through all of this exploration is that people think in very different ways. It's perfectly possible for someone to present an obvious contradiction and see no contradiction there when the rest of us do see the contradiction. And I've never seen any way to resolve that to where if someone refuses to see the contradiction in their own statements, there's nothing that we can do to resolve that for them. We can only resolve this individually for ourselves. So that'll wrap this one up. Um, please feel free to enjoy the comments down below and I'll see you in the future.